Matthew McCann is checking on traps he set in a section of the New Jersey Pinelands. It's part of a study to see if mud salamanders have returned to the area where they haven't been seen in over 50 years. Um, the current status is unknown. Uh, we believe that there was at least one, so we believe there was a small population at least. Um, some believe that that population has been extirpated, but surveys have not been conducted in years, and so it's, the status is really unknown, and we're trying to figure out if that population still exists. The area provides the type of habitat the mud salamanders need, cedar swamps, springs, and former cranberry bogs. Um, well, they inhabit uh, really muddy and mucky seeps and springs, um, so they live up to their, their name as mud salamanders and they really require, in addition to muddy conditions, they require clean water. So it's hard to get that combination of muddy water yet uh, clean enough for them to survive. In early spring, the 1300 acre preserve comes alive with the sound of carpenter frogs and other wildlife. They need the same conditions to breed as the mud salamanders. The closest sighting of a mud salamander to this area was in Franklin County, Pennsylvania in 1991. There was an unconfirmed sighting in New Jersey in 1988. It's been so long since the last one was sighted that some believe that they've been extirpated from the state. However, this area, although there are roads and housing developments, the, the area in general, in this particular area, has not changed all that much. Um, so there's hope that they're still here. Um, they're really elusive, really secretive. They spend a lot of time, you know, buried down in the mud. So it's possible that they're here. There might be a small population that's just hidden and no one's really looking for them. So it's, it'd be really easy for such a small animal to remain hidden for so long. The trash being used to draw the amphibians contain a light stick. We don't know if it's because it's drawing bugs in and they're following the bugs or is just something about the light that draws them in. Um, but studies have shown that it, it works as a, an effective method to attract them. So mud salamanders spend about two years in a larval aquatic stage. Um, the mindset is that they might be more vulnerable to capture when they're aquatic versus when they become adults and they start digging down into the mud and become impossible to find. Fish, tadpoles, and frogs have been drawn to the traps. Leaf litter bags set in streams and cover boards placed on the forest floor are also being used to find the amphibians. During one search, McCann discovers a four-toed salamander. It's an encouraging sign. Both this species and the mud salamander are part of the lungless salamander family. So they're kind of notorious for going decades without being seen. So we're hopeful that we'll find at least one in this study. If a population is found, it would be the only known population in the state. So that would call for higher protections and it would say a lot about the habitat in general. This is a headwaters area for the Rancocas Creek, a Delaware River tributary. If the mud salamanders are found here, the discovery will have an impact on land use nearby. Right now the headwaters are vulnerable to development. Um, they're classified in the Pinelands Comprehensive Management Plan as a rural development area. There's a proposal to upgrade that to a forest area, which is a higher level of protection and allows for less development. So we're hoping that finding the mud salamander population will help push that proposal through and protect the entire watershed. The project will end in November and will resume next spring. Partial funding for this project provided by the Foundation for the Conservation of Salamanders.